Hello everybody, it's Fu here and today I'm going to be talking to you about a new trick room strategy has been found. You are now able to use trick room pretty much at the beginning of the turn, which is insane for Pokemon battles. It's just a huge strategy change and really, really interesting. So this was only discovered recently and I'll tell you all about it and then also how you might want to use it in battle with a team code for you to try if you want to, just to test it out more than anything. First, for those who don't know, trick room is it's a very important move in Pokemon battles because it reverses the turn order, meaning that the slowest Pokemon will go first and the fastest Pokemon will go last, which is really pivotal and game-changing for a lot of battles. But it does have a lot of risk and counterplay involved because the move Trick Room is minus priority, so it pretty much always goes last, leaving your opponent plenty of opportunity to knock you out before you can use it, or try to stop you from using it in other ways, like using Taunt, for example. But with this new mechanic, you can actually use Trick Room right at the beginning of the turn. So how does it work? Well, it's a weird interaction between the move Copycat and Dynamaxing. Copycat copies the last move that was used, but it can't copy max moves used by Dynamax Pokemon. It instead copies the move that the max move is based off. So for example, if a Pokemon uses Max Flare based off their Flamethrower move, Copycat will copy Flamethrower. This is important for Trick Room because when you Dynamax, Trick Room becomes Max Guard, which goes right at the beginning of the turn. It's plus four priority, so it goes right at the beginning of the turn. If you have a really fast Copycat user, you can Copycat Trick Room straight after that Max Guard, which is crazy because your opponent won't even have a chance to attack you to stop that. The best example of this is actually going to be Copycat Riolu because it gets the Prankster ability which gives it priority Copycat. It's the only Pokemon to get Prankster and Copycat at the moment. So this is actually one of the best Trick Room setters in the game, something that doesn't even normally learn Trick Room. Riolu suddenly has viability which is so cool. So what you can do is just go for your Dynamax and Max Guard based off Trick Room with your Trick Room setter. Go for Copycat with Riolu and you will set up the Trick Room right at the beginning of the turn and then you can proceed to do massive damage with your Trick Room Sweepers. Doesn't matter if Riolu gets knocked out, that's actually probably beneficial and Riolu is quite frail. It just means that you'll then be able to bring in your Trick Room Sweepers. But that's so cool and it's worked really well, especially in Battle Tower it works really well. But how well does it work in competitive battles? Well, let's take a look at some examples. So I think it's only honest to start with the issues when actually trying to use this strategy in competitive battles and that is moves that interrupt the strategy. So those are moves that come after Max Guard but before your copycat. So copycat copies them instead of the Max Guard trick room. Common examples of these in the doubles format are Fake Out, Follow Me and Ally Switch, all of which have higher priority than Prankster and so will go before your copycat and you'll copy them instead, it's really frustrating. You also have to be careful about other Prankster users because if they're faster than your Prankster user, again, they will go before your copycat. So Whimsicott is the main one here, which is one of the most widely used Pokemon in the format. And it going for a Tailwind, for example, you're going to be using Tailwind on a Trick Room team, which doesn't help at all. And then also Grimmsnarl, I was actually using a really slow Riolu because I thought that would be beneficial on a Trick Room team. I could go for one HP reversals once I was taken down to my Focus Sash and do some damage in Trick Room. I thought that would be really cool, but that's not what happened because Grimmsnarl was then faster than me, so I would copy Light Screen or Thunder Wave or something. That was not ideal. Having said that, Though I did struggle to get up Trick Room in some battles, I don't think this was because the opponent was trying to stop me from get up Trick Room. I don't think anyone I battled so far knew about this strategy. I think they just accidentally went for moves that they would have gone for anyway to try to play around the strategy. And actually, I think most people aren't prepared for this, which is really interesting and obviously a real benefit if you manage to get it to work because people don't expect you to get Trick Room up so quickly and so easily. So that's something to bear in mind. And actually, I've got a great replay of a battle where the opposition obviously really didn't know how to act around this strategy because they just had two powerful attackers. They thought if we just take out the Trick Room user turn one, then we'll be able to kind of sweep through the rest of the team because they won't have their Trick Room. And I think you can tell from the opponent's lead choices that really what they were going to try to do was just apply a lot of offensive pressure against my team to try to prevent Trick Room which just won't work against this Riolu copycat strategy. You can tell because they led with Barascuda, really powerful, Dragapult, really powerful, 
and they're even dynamaxing their Barraskuda to get as much damage output as possible. They think if they can knock out Hatterene, I won't be able to get Trick Room up. Actually, this strategy is basically the complete countermeasure to that because not only are, is Hatterene not setting up the Trick Room, Hatterene is max guarding, so it won't take any damage this turn. So that is so fantastic for me because they just weren't prepared for this. I go for the max guard, I go for um, copycat with Riolu and it's just going to work and work really well. So you can see the max guard comes off here and my Riolu successfully gets the copycat. I was kind of concerned that Dragapult might have ally switch, you do see it sometimes, but generally it's better as more of an offensive Pokemon. So the Trick Room comes up, we've set it up straight away and then you can see the Barraskuda and the Dragapult are both going to try to target down the Hatterene to try to knock it out before it gets the Trick Room up. But that was, it was, it works so perfectly because I'm max guarding anyway. Here, I just show off that Copycat can copy other stuff, so I go for a random Shadow Ball. But it also helps because if that was a potentially sashed Barraskuda, then I broke the sash and I'm able to then go for my Psychic type move here. I saw that the opponent had a Ludicolo, so I wanted to get the Psychic terrain up in case they had Fake Out. Um, which would not actually be the end of the world because they can't fake out my Dino Max Pokemon anyway, but if they wanted to, they could fake out my Riolu, I guess. So uh, you can see here that the Shadow Ball is doing some decent damage to my uh, Hatterene, but the opponent really doesn't have too much countermeasure to the Trick Room. Now it's set up, they were really banking on being able to basically outmuscle the Trick Room being set up, but that's not the case. So anyway, here again, I'm able to support with Riolu. Riolu actually has a really great support move pool. Helping Hand is there as well, which is fantastic. And um, and fortunately, my Hatterene lives this Iron Head from the Gyarados, which is really great. Although actually probably not too necessary because I do have two Pokemon in the back still. We've still got tons of Trick Room, so we're pretty okay. So anyway, here Hatterene's um, Dynamax wears off. We've got one more, no, two more turns of Trick Room. Um, I'm actually going to go down to the life of this turn, which I thought was great because I've got a Torkoal in the back. Torkoal is so fantastic on Trick Room teams. I can't kind of believe the amount of damage it puts out. It's pretty insane. Um, so I'm help I helping hand take out the Gyarados, which is the biggest offensive threat on my opponent's team. And then I've got the Torkoal in the back to get rid of the rain, with meaning that Pelipper just won't have any offensive output. You see it goes for Hurricane here, taking Riolu down to its sash. It does actually confuse, which is really annoying, but not the end of the world because at this stage I've kind of won. Despite Trick Room running out as well, Trick Room is about to run out, but I've got too much um, presence in the back as well. I've got Dram Power as well, which is a very powerful special attacker, which will easily be able to take on a Pelipper. And you see that the battle is cancelled. So that is just showing you that this can really work. Opponents target your Trick Room setter, which is actually going to be max guarding, and you can get the copycat Trick Room up instead. So people really don't know how to play around this yet. That is so cool. The issue is that people can accidentally pre prevent the Trick Room from coming up. So all in all, what do I think about the strategy? I think it's awesome. I think this mechanic can definitely be used in some creative ways. I think that other copycat sets could definitely come into use, and I'd really like to see that. But in terms of it being seen as, on paper, a very reliable way to set up Trick Room because your opponent won't have much counterplay, I don't really agree with that because there are amazing ways to get Trick Room set up this generation. Things like Magic Bounce Hatterene, which is immune to taunt anyway, and then you can pair that up with Psychic Surge in DD, which it makes Pokemon immune to Fake Out because it's a priority move, and also has Follow Me to misdirect all the attacks away from Hatterene anyway. I think that's actually a far more reliable strategy to get up Trick Room because you're in control of it. You know the variables there. Whereas with this one, it really depends on what priority moves your opponent might use. It, it, it takes opponents off guard, and when it works, it works spectacularly. But I have a feeling that as time goes on and people cotton onto this, which they are starting to now, it's going to be much harder to pull off because they just need to go for those priority moves and your whole strategy is out of the window. But it's really cool nonetheless, and I love Riolu. It's such a cool Pokemon. So that's going to be all from me today. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this Trick Room strategy in the comment section below. And also, you can try out the team if you want to. All the stuff to be said is I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.